In this video, we're talking about uh, custom affinity audiences versus custom intent audiences. So by the end of this short video, you'll understand the difference between the two, when you should use them, when you shouldn't, um, and also uh, how they compare with in-market audiences. Um, so I'm Mark Tillerson, welcome to a Tea Time Show with me. Um, if you enjoy this, uh, if you have questions, um, please ask them in the comments, give us a like, make sure you subscribe for more videos coming up on uh, Google Ads and how to get the most from your campaigns and make the most profit. Um, so we're going to start with the definition of each of these types of audiences um, and then the comparison with the two, um, uh, or three of them, and when you should and shouldn't use them. So let's start with the custom affinity um, audience definition. Um, so this is more like kind of TV audiences. They're much broader than custom intent. Um, so think of these as, uh, you know, like Google kind of describes them as, as kind of more like TV audiences. So it's much broader targeting, um, whereas custom intent are much more specific. Um, so the the difference kind of between the two uh, significantly is with a custom affinity and custom intent audiences, you create both using um, keywords that these users may have typed into Google. Um, so we know what they are searching for um, or specific URLs that they have visited. With custom affinity, um, you are effectively saying, I want an audience of people who are typing search terms like these or visiting URLs like these. So it's more like a broader topic. With custom intent audiences, you are, so you are including people who have specifically typed these search terms into Google or who have vis visited these specific URLs. So if you're familiar with remarketing or retargeting from your own website, you'll know that you can create an audience of visitors that have visited your entire website anywhere or visitors to a specific URL. Custom intent is um, kind of similar to that really. So if you wanted to, uh, let's say that you, you sold donut making machines and you had a competitor that sold donut making machines with a page on their website, on their e-commerce store, uh, about those, then you could effectively, uh, in principle, say, I want to target people who have visited my competitor's web page about donut making machines, and then another 10 competitors, and maybe there's a Wikipedia article about donut making machines or whatever. But you could put all of those into a custom intent audience and target people who have visited those specific pages. With custom affinity, um, you are targeting people who have visited pages like those. So much broader, Google's gonna work that out. So you have much less control, much less understanding about which, which uh, web pages Google has decided are similar. It won't tell you, um, they'll just be included in that audience. Whereas with custom intent, you know that it's a visitor to one of these 20 web pages on the internet. Uh, and so forth. So how does that compare to an in-market audience? So an in-market audience is, you could argue, it's kind of Google's um, own created, automatically created um, custom intent audience. So if someone is uh, looking to buy some furniture, for example, there will be an in-market audience for dining furniture, let's say. Um, now, how does, how does a user end up in that in-market audience? Well, they search Google for dining chairs, dining furniture, and so forth, and Google will say, aha, you are in the market for dining furniture. But Google also knows that those users are visiting web pages about dining furniture as well. So that's how someone would get in, a user would get into an in-market audience. That user could get equally into your custom affinity audience if you were to create a custom affinity audience with five or six dining furniture URLs um, or dining furniture uh, search terms. So they could be in that audience um, and they could also fit, that same user could fit into a custom intent audience but they would have to have typed pretty specifically the keywords that you included or the specific URLs that you included as well. So um, in summary, uh, 
In market Google creates, you have a bit less control over that and they may not have an in-market audience specific to what you sell uh, or what you do as a business. Um, with a customer affinity, it's much broader and Google's going to expand on the terms that, that uh, the terms and the pages that you create. And in market is much more specific. It will only include users that have used uh, those keywords in a search query or have visited specifically the URLs that you got. So they're kind of layered in terms of um, your control and also the size of that audience. So that presents some problems in how and when you can use those audiences. So one thing in particular, having used these audiences quite a lot, um, is that custom intent, uh, the audience you can use for custom intent for display campaigns, you may not necessarily be able to use for YouTube campaigns. We tried this, it failed epically. Why did it fail? Well, it failed because if you create an audience specifically for, uh, an, in a custom intent audience for use with YouTube and you go through the Google Ads interface, it will only present you with the option to put in search terms to create your custom intent audience. You cannot, for some reason right now, use visitors to specific URLs in a custom intent audience if you're going to use it with a YouTube campaign. Um, so you can't do that. So although they are both custom intent audiences, they're different for YouTube and for uh, display. Um, so uh, the other thing is that you would want to uh, really test these um, to see which one of these works best for you. Um, and the other thing I would strongly recommend that you do is if you are doing display campaigns or YouTube campaigns is that you overlay this targeting. So by all means, test a custom affinity audience, test a custom intent audience and test an in-market audience. Maybe have those in three different ad groups to see which performs the best um, in terms of response, conversion rates, view through conversions, that type of thing. Um, you may want to do that, uh, but also overlay that with uh, topic targeting. So we know that these people are researching your topic or we know that they are in market and that's fine, but we don't necessarily want to show them ads alongside content that's not even closely related to the market that they are in. So if someone is in the market for dining furniture, we may not want to show that, uh, show your ad alongside content about Peppa Pig, for example. Um, you may not want to do that. So, um, if your uh, you know if your product or service is more business related, then you want to avoid games and all this kind of stuff, and maybe focus on business content, business news, that kind of stuff. And that means that those impressions and clicks that you would you will get absolutely you will get them from all over the web. If you want to advertise something that is business related, show it alongside at least some sort of business content. If it's something related to um, home homeware, something like that, then avoid the business content and only advertise alongside uh, content that's more relevant. It doesn't have to be specifically relevant, but I would strongly recommend that you at least make it uh, someone's in kind of business mood or someone's in homeware mood or someone's in uh, kind of fun party mood or whatever it is um, that your product matches. Just try and match it kind of vaguely at least, otherwise you will waste a heap of money on clicks. Um, if you have questions about this, and they do come up an awful lot from these videos, please do ask them in the comments. Uh, we love to hear you, your comments and what you're struggling with and to try and help you out. Um, please give us a like, a thumbs up on this uh, if you've enjoyed it, and make sure you do subscribe for more videos on Google Ads.